there, John with Offgrid Homesteading. Sorry if there's any uh, wind noise on this. Uh, right now I'm just gonna make it quick, but uh, still overcast. We've had rains, 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 so I haven't been able to come out and use an electrical, electrical device in the rain. So um, today I'm gonna just go ahead and get the generator kicked on and uh, go ahead and see if I can slice the rest of these up into manageable pieces at nine inches and uh, go from there. So that's kind of the main, the main goal for today to move the project forward. Then I need to, once these are all cut, I need to cut them down to the right uh, width for each one, which should be a lot easier because they'll be smaller. And then um, start installing them. And then I'll probably have to get some more uh, foam blocks from uh, one of our friends. We've got basically a, a large amount that we can go get if we need it. And have to bring those, cut those down to get those in here too. So um, anyway, so we're saving maybe $1,500 in uh, well, actually, more than it's probably two to three thousand dollars in insulation. Think about nine-inch thick foam insulation. Um, each four-inch pick, uh, four-inch thick, four foot by eight foot um, closed cell foam runs about thirty-three dollars a piece. So uh, we're, you know, you start adding that up, and you got, you know, twenty or thirty, forty pieces of those, or whatever it is and uh, to get that depth that we're looking for and um, you know it all adds up real quick so you're either going to spend the time or you're going to spend the money and right now I have a, a good amount of time so uh, this is what I'll be doing okay bye So I got all the uh, I got all the foam cut, and I, the reason I didn't actually play the second half of cutting the rest of the foam was it, it was about as boring as watching paint dry. So I figured I'd save you guys the agony of that. So that's all the pieces, the long pieces and everything that were cut. Feedback I can give you on using that little power adapter over there, power supply, is it seems to work good when you're up to about a foot of um, a distance across the wire. Once you start getting close to two feet across, it really slows down. So really the next step is uh, uh, should have, e either you do a DC power supply that can probably go up to 30 amps instead of 20, sorry, um, instead of just going up to 10 amps, maybe going up to 20 to 30 amps. Um, 
and uh, then you can actually variably control it to get a nice uh, speed of your cut. Um, if I could have had it just a little bit hotter, it would have gone so much faster. But uh, I don't know what time. It's actually 3.20 now, so I've probably spent two hours, two and a half hours cutting uh, all of those pieces. And that was, you know, a good trial, but if I had a, a Variac or a Rheostat, an adjustable one that went up to 20 amps on 110, that would have worked fine. And if I had a DC power supply that went up to probably 20 amps, um, I would have been able to adjust it exactly where it needed to be for that. So um, there, by the time you do it, it's probably better to do the DC uh, power supply versus the, uh, the, the uh, Variac, just because, um, you can more finely tune it to exactly the voltage and amperage that you need. On the rheostat, you're using 110, um, and you're you're uh, throttling it down. This one, you're actually increasing it to the point that you want it, which I guess is still throttling it down because it's all coming through 110 anyway. But anyway, whatever you want, um, they both seem to work. Uh, the, the, both of them work. I know the rheostat or the variac will work great. Um, and uh, so anyway, I'm going to go take a break eat some food, come back, and then I'm now going to cut these down for the second run along the 9-inch side, or the narrower side, um, so that I can uh, fit them to the 14 and a half inches where I can start uh, fitting them in the, um, in the joists and stuff today. That's it.